Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of We Bought a Money Sucking Hole in the Ground. This is the short cableway scrapping episode. This is what the short cableway used to look like when the silo was in active service. And just for anybody that didn't already know, the short cableway is about 30 feet long. It's located between the launch control center and the blast lock on level two of the silo. And this is what we're working towards, having a short cableway that is usable, well lit, and safe. So I'm going to start playing the video now and we're going to get into the actual scrapping of our short cableway. So as I begin the cut with the plasma cutter here, you can see about the approximate speed we're able to cut through this thick uh, I-beam that I'm working on. These things are about a quarter inch thick and you're able to cut through one in about a minute, minute and a half. Biggest uh, downside to plasma cutting is uh, the slag that it leaves behind. Sometimes when you make a cut on two ends of a beam, you'll have to come back and find out where the slag sealed the beam back. So just beat on it, you'll see that in just a minute here. These were some of the first cuts we did inside the silos, so it was new to us. And this is where you have to go back and redo everything again. So this first piece we were doing took far longer than it should have. See, we had actually had to cut a notch out of the right side there. Did a lot of talking about the best way to do it. I jumped on it a few times, hit it with a hammer. Just everything we could to get it out. We got quite a bit better by the end of the first day. So you can see there, I was actually able to get that right vertical I-beam out before we got the horizontal one. One cool thing that we found is on the second section there off to my left, there's a large weight underneath the I-beam that just about doubles the weight of the entire frame, which is good for uh, scrap value for the silo. It is uh, almost impossible to cut through with the plasma cutter though. The guy currently running the plasma cutter is named Mike. He's done a lot of work for Death Wears Bunny Slippers in the past. I really appreciated his help. He was doing a lot of hard work. And once again this month, Colby and Gary joined us on the site on different days. And we got a ton of work done. What we're doing right here is pulling down the overhead there's some cross bracing up there. There's also a I-beam that holds up the fluorescent bay that you can see in the foreground and removing some of the conduits. Everything we're doing at this point is a learning process. There's two sections of cableway in the short cableway and there's 26 more that we have to do in the long cableway which after this project I have calculated would take us about 17 days to do. So it changes my priority on when we're going to be doing it, as I'd rather get some projects we can get done in a couple days done. So this is a real good example of the best way we found to cut through a 4-inch I-beam. You can see the I-beam on the ceiling there. I cut a box on both the left and right side. That allows the plasma cutter to make a nice clean cut through the top and bottom sections without having to go deeper through the, web, the webbing section of the I-beam. So what we elected to do, since we had three horizontal I-beams going holding up the roof in there, we took the far one and the near one out and just left the center so that the uh, sides of the short cableway didn't kind of come in at us. That was the end of the first day. Colby was only able to join us on the first day and Gary joined us on the second. This is us taking out all the conduits up in the ceiling. What you can see on the conduits is actually a calcium build up. They're not rusted. They're uh, not sure what they're made out of, but they're not uh, normal steel. So 
the entire process of scrapping out the short cable way, we have about four hours to go that we weren't able to complete. But it took us about 15 hours to get to the point where we're at. And there was a lot of learning going on about uh, how to properly do this and a lot of talking about the best way to do things. We tried the plasma cutter, which worked great in most situations. We also used uh, sawzalls and grinders for certain projects. And as we went along in the cable way, we were bagging, uh, wrapping plastic and duct tape around those two pipes you can see behind kind of where the light is. Um, those pipes, I believe strongly that those uh, pipe insulation is made out of asbestos. So we are encapsulating that and leaving it for a future date. All right, so we'll slow the video down and let you guys see some of the more interesting stuff that happened on day two. Enjoy. So this is where we left it at the end of July here. We've got just a little bit of work left to do on the short cable way. As far as scrapping goes, then we're going to start cleaning it up and put in permanent lighting. That'll help us uh, pave the way for doing the launch control center over the next couple months. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you on the next episode of Atomic Underground. See ya! You're not bleeding, you're not working, right? That's right. You broke it! Your fault. <laughs>